This is part three of my Cambodia series. Uh, the first time that I went, went there, um, there was this one guy that I saw, a Cambodian guy, and I just felt like he was shining. Like every time I would see him, I just wanted to talk to him. I found out through, I don't know how, um, that he was a fairly new Christian and just my heart just said, I want to I want to share something about God with him, but there was never an opportunity to talk to him. And the first day they lined up five translators against the wall and there was five doctors and they said, pick one. And he was one of the translators. So I was super excited because I was going to pick him. But then God said, no, don't pick him. So I picked somebody else. And, um, but then I would just look at him and I'd be like, oh, I, I still want to be working with this guy and uh, as when you're working with translators it's really nice to have the same translator every single time because they get to know your style they get to know what questions you're asking and so then they can start asking those same things uh, for you before you even have to say anything it makes things go a lot faster now all the other docs had um, the same translator for all six medical camps but me my translators every two days they seem to be changing but I think in hindsight it was because God wanted to show them something today because from the first I mean wanted to show them something because from the first day God started doing miracles and I already shared some of those in the other uh, videos but uh, but so they would just get trained up on how to pray because I would have them pray after the first couple once they saw that God can heal um, and I'd be like okay now you pray but um, anyways getting back to this guy so I it was like my fifth fifth camp I think and um I still hadn't gotten a chance to talk to him and and that day um, I so usually I get really hungry on these medical camps because there's not always enough food for me to eat and that morning in particular they just didn't have enough for breakfast and I remember looking at it going God um, I am going to be very hungry and I don't want to be grouchy with my patients so please help me and that day even though I had less to eat I wasn't hungry and my translator, though, was super hungry and he had to leave to go eat. I was like, yeah, you go eat. I'm going to see more patients. And neither one of us somehow realized that without him, I can't see any patients because I can't speak Cambodian or Khmer. And so um, I was sitting there and I call the next patient after he leaves. And this guy, this guy that was the shiny guy, his name is Michael. He says to me, do you need a translator? And I was like, that's when it hit me. I was like, yes, I do. And um, he's like, I can help you. And I was like, what about your doctor? And he said, oh, she's busy for right now, so I can help you with this next patient. And so he went and he got the next patient for me. And then uh, he brought her back. And as he was translating for me, I found out that she was very hard of hearing. So he was having to yell into her ear over and over again the same thing. And for some reason, I was getting really frustrated with that. And so I said, stop, 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 Michael. Just ask her if she wants to get healed. And so he did, and she did. And so he said, yeah, pray for her. And I said, I was like, oh my goodness, this is it. This is what I'm going to teach Michael. I'm going to teach him that you can pray for people. And so I was like, no, you pray for her. And he's like, no, you pray for her. And me being the doctor, I get to be the boss. <laughs> so I, was, I took his hands and I put them on her ears. And I said, no, you pray for her in the name of Jesus. And I don't know what he said, what he did. But as he was praying, all of a sudden she went like this. And I was like, oh my goodness, she died. Okay, so now I'm going to share like what I did. Um, so the first uh, day or two, they gave us this training session on things you should do, shouldn't do. And one of the things they had said is don't put your hand on any C Cambodian's head because they feel like their soul comes out. And so i have been really good about asking before I did that if I needed to touch their head for any reason. But when Michael was doing this and all the patients so far had had no problem with it, that I just kind of didn't think about it. And I did that. And then she did this. And I was like, oh, my goodness, she thinks her soul came out. I am in so much much trouble and so um, I'm trying to though I need to figure out like if medically something is wrong because she was an older woman and so she could have had a heart attack or a stroke so I listened to her heart and it's beating and um, I'm trying to look and see if she's moving things because she's not really responding to us and and I see that she's moving her fingers a little bit and her toes a little bit and I'm like I don't know, I don't know. So all these things are going through my head. Did something medical happen to her? Is she being touched by God? Or does she think her soul came out? And one of the doctors comes by and he's like, what happened? And I was like, I don't know, because I'm still trying to figure out what's really going on. And I'm hoping somebody's going to tell me this is what's going on. And it's not that her soul has come out. Um, and then uh, the locals came by and they 
pulled her from the chair onto the floor and they're pinching her and she's literally turning purple but I'm letting them do it because I need to know medically that she's okay and then I'll confess that uh, you know what I did and um, as they're doing that she starts moving everything and so I'm like okay she did not have a massive stroke she didn't have a massive heart attack so I think probably she thinks her soul came out but part of me was still thinking I think she could also just be slain in the spirit. Like my gut was saying she's slain in the spirit, but um, but I did do that. So I wanted to make sure that that wasn't the cause and it wasn't a mental thing. And, and so anyways, while I'm mulling all that in my head, um, we're all talking about what do you think happened? And um, she, she just gets up and she can hear everything and she starts talking and everyone's like, whoa. And, um, but she still couldn't see it. And, um, and so I was like, Michael, pray for her because I wanted him to see the complete healing. And, um, and he starts crying and I'm just giving him a hug. And he's like, no, you pray for her. And I was like, no, you pray for her. And I said, I'm going to go eat lunch. And when I come back, you, you pray for her and when I come back she'll be healed because I wanted him to know that it's not because I'm there or that a missionary is there that she got healed she got healed because any Christian could pray and people will get healed and so I left I came back 10 minutes later and she was totally healed and it was just amazing and God is so good <laughs> and from there on Michael and I bonded and um, as I'll share later on Michael is the reason that I was able to go to Cambodia and do all the things that uh, God did in Cambodia without him it would have been completely impossible and I just love how God connected us from my very first trip uh, very first medical camp he pointed him out and I had no reason why I was so uh, wanting to know this guy but God knew why he just joined our hearts together and so God is good all the time <laughs>